done. Let's just have this up for fun. Oh yes. <laughs> Hi, hi, hello, Paolo. I'm just getting my reference on the side. Yeah, kind of like a casual raver type of outfit. Oh yeah, this is what I was messing around with the eyes. a while since I was working on this. I'm all trying to remember what I was doing. <laughs> oh yeah, some of the fishnet doesn't exactly line up. But that's okay, we can fix that. Yeah, that way it looks like her fur is going through one of the holes. There we go. Hope everyone's doing all right. Um, this is just generic. This was just like a random pick I was working on during one of the past streams. Let me turn off the fishnet for now. Hi, hi. Hope everyone's doing well tonight. Or today. Day, night. this moment in time. Ooh. How do I do your arm? I need to start making character reference sheets, even if it's just for me. probably move the ones that I've made already so it'd be easier for me to find. There you go. I just need your arm. Oh, Becky skin change. What you want? Yeah, like I thought about taking off my Twitter, but at the same time I was like, eh. It's a double-edged sword because I'd rather have it for you know people to because of the bigger social space and all that 
And then if they're going to try to use my stuff as AI, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say fucking good luck. None of my anatomy is accurate anyway. So they're like, in true honesty, they're they're not going to use me as a fucking reference of all of all people. Uh, let's go none. All right. None time. And let's bust out the sacred text. Uh, is it in this folder? There we go. Let me just make sure the copy is off. There we go. Behold the sacred text. <laughs> That's definitely going to be what aliens find. They're just going to find a shit ton of porn of all these different furries and shit like that, and they're just going to think we worship them as gods. <laughs> That's all. That's all the aliens are ever gonna find. Just gonna find porn. And they're gonna see the Statue of Liberty and think like, "Oh man, that must have been the biggest woman that they worshipped." <laughs> they're gonna find the Statue of Liberty, and they're gonna find the Gundam in Japan. <laughs> and they're gonna be like, oh shit, did the Gundam mate with mate with the Statue of Liberty or something? Was that like their was that the king and this was the queen? <laughs> oh my god, that would be funny. Drunk nun. That would be interesting. Maybe I'll try making like Mecha Becky or something sometime. There's a lot of ideas that I need to do. Anyway, back to this. Uh, okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's our left arm. We're not showing anything on that one. I need to draw prison steals giant mech. It's just an eagle robot named Freedom. No, this is just for fun. I was working on it in a past stream. Figured I'd attempt to finish it for this stream. Uh, that would be like that. Let me make another layer just so I <clears throat> don't mess this up. So normally this would be right here. And whatever, it's not gonna be that fucking accurate. Like I don't ex like when it comes to scars, I don't expect anybody to be hyper hyper um, exact. It's like as long as you know that there's supposed to be a fucking scar, and like you you tried to make it work or to get close. Because if I'm not gonna give a shit, then I don't expect anybody else to give a shit. prefer if some points of it are sharp. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you were in ad hell for a moment there. I'm sure it was cold and scary. You're like, what is this? showing past the hair but sometimes covering them up does better I'm trying to see if that works in this case 
Uh, kind of like I've seen hair work like that. But it might be better with just it there in this case. It's kind of a either or scenario. Yeah, they're kind of like their own thing. And then apparently if you mute the ads, um, the streamer doesn't get any, get any kickback for that. So they're better off either, or was it if they're on mute? It's either if they're on mute uh, or, um, Or if like the stream is, or like if the stream page is not up itself, like I think you have to have like it visibly up, but like you can be in like another window. You just can't have like the tab itself closed or something. It's one of those things. I'll have to look it up. It's been a while since I heard about that. I think you can just have the volume like super low, as long as it's not on like mute. Something like that. I don't know. It's been a while. I'll have to ask around because I know one of the people I follow mentioned it. Singing alien with a cowboy hat. Do -do. Just cleaning up a little bit before I move on to coloring. Why is it always the aliens in human, human clothing? Why not the other way around? I mean, it's a it can be a thing. There are situations where you see like human characters wearing like alien clothing to try to blend in. So it is a thing. It just doesn't happen very often. Because a lot of the time, stories take place on Earth rather than elsewhere because it's more of like familiar territory so when you do get space stories um it is fun to see like characters try to blend in by disguising themselves as like the current society that they're on like whatever planet that they're on so it's a thing it's just you gotta look for it yeah exactly So, it's there. You just gotta find it. Or, you know, worst case scenario, if you can't find it, make it yourself. Be like, fuck this, I'm gonna make a story about a person who has to live in alien society, but make sure they don't find out that they're human or something. So they just disguise themselves as whatever the, whatever the, the common look is or something. And then, like, you know, if, he, if it's a guy, you can, like, put them in, like, goofy scenarios and stuff like that. Or, hell, even make them dress up as, as a female and see where that goes. And vice versa. So, there are many ideas you can go with that. Or, like, they pretend to be the pet or something. I don't know. It's like reverse elf or something. <laughs> Okay, so I think we're good. Do I want to do the hair thing? Mm, sure, why not? Let's see how this goes. I don't have to be too crazy with it. Uh. 
Uh, <laughs> exactly. Like they're just walking around in, in a fucking um, bondage gear or something. It's like, ah, oh, yes, yes, that that was that was a popular choice. <laughs> like they don't even question. They just go like, oh wow, this is a person of culture. <laughs> Or like, um, like they're trying to disguise themselves as an alien, and but they, they like panic, thinking that they're about to get caught or something. Like they're like, like I don't know. Let's just say like they're at a party or something, and so they just grab like the first random alien they can, just to say like, oh yeah, I'm with this person. And let's just say like the alien is just like I don't know, just trippy looking or something. Like they're just like exotic or something, and like the the. The common, the common race or whatever, like whoever's looking for them, was like, oh, oh, wow, you're with that one, oh, like rock on, <laughs> like, like the cho the per the alien they chose is like one of the more risque <laughs> type of species or some shit, and they're like, what? <laughs> and so then you just see the characters get like end up in like a room together and then like leave and be like, okay, was not expecting that, <laughs> and then I don't know the the alien that um that that when they separate the the other aliens are like call me or something. That'd be fun. That'd be a fun time. And if you really want to take it far, have that character be like a reoccurring character or something. And like maybe like the first few times it's just like a quickie or like a fling or something. But then like later on it starts getting serious. I mean you can take it anywhere you want, but that's just my immediate thought of this scenario. And now my problem is that now that sounds fun and I want to draw that, but I can't right now. So I will have to write that down for later. Maybe I'll put in one of the uh, slice of life things. Oh yeah, like you're holding their hand and then you realize that's their dick or something. <laughs> or whatever sexual organ they have. It's like, oh that's their fleet loop. No, damn, I, I didn't realize they're in the fleet loops. Like, let me know how that went. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that would be a kink. It's no different than people into furry stuff. So if aliens are into humans, go like, oh, well, I want to hook up with a human, then it means pretty much the same mentality. Or sex bots. Hello, good evening. Uh, no, because her ear kind of wraps around, so it should be fine. Just cleaning up a little bit. I don't technically have to, but sometimes certain details just kind of get to you, and you're like, ah, I want to fix that. Mostly just making some of the lines a little less thick when they don't need to be. question is, is this the current color for Blake? Let me open up another image of Blake just to be sure. Because sometimes I adjust her fur so that it's not so dark. Uh, what was the most recent? The re most recent would be her mom. So I guess she'll be my reference point. That's the color there, and yep, it's the same. Cool, that works. Thank you, Blake's mom. I'm gonna keep the fishnet separate just to make it easier. Becky in a cream filled outfit. <laughs> I mean, all the cream filled girls wear is just like something black. 
and like slightly revealing depending on the character like hold on uh so yeah they're all wearing black some more revealing than others the slight exception would be coconut but she is wearing a black collar so that's like the closest to being pretty much different from everyone else uh no um, uh, boysenberry is still wearing black she just wears jeans over, uh, on top of it uh avocado is a little bit different but she does have black in her outfit uh, and then the BLT gang are different, are a different set, so they don't count. Uh, white pomegranate has a little bit of black, but for the most part, yeah, she is wearing a pretty different outfit, but she does have a black collar as well. I would say that's more of like her stage outfit, whereas she'd probably have a normal one. If I did give her a, a different outfit, it'd probably just be like a more revealing version. So like with the straps and all that. But yeah, so white pomegranate, pomegranate is probably like... White pomegranate and coconut are like the two that are far different from the others. Anyway. Do -do. Uh, let's see. I always thought that uh, any sort of you know, Thanksgiving dinner, literally. Oh, yes. So, yes, I'm sure you would. <clears throat> yeah, I think at some point I will do artwork of um, Blake's parents um, in the normal timeline just to show what they look like I mean they're pretty much gonna look pretty similar to the ones in secrets so not not too big of a difference and they would have a different they would have different last names because um, in the seek well I can't say secrets universe because that's not entirely true but in in the alternate universe with Fat Blake um, the last names are a bit swapped because um, I want to say the last names are based off of their mother's maiden names instead of their their father's um, last names. So that way there's like an actual difference. But um, I'm not 100% sure if that's where I'm going with that. But that was like one of my first thoughts about it. Because in the normal timeline, it's like, you know, traditional style. And I saw that, so I'm going to clean that up. You. Okay, the rest is fine, I think. Hold on. There we go. No, like, I could, like, if I did draw her parents in the normal timeline, it would just be, like, she probably has, like, a photo of them or something. Because in the normal timeline, they passed away. And there, will, and then it just depends on if I'm just gonna say Blake was homeless as a child, or she was in an orphanage as a child, which is more likely, and it makes more sense, honestly. So she might have some sort of keepsake of them. And this is assuming, like, if Blake has other family members, like whether or not they, you know, took property or something, or just kind of ditched her, whatever the case may be. Or it could just be just to draw them for, for like lore information. It's like, okay, you're her parents, but she'll never 
either she won't have knowledge of them or she'll never interact with them after a certain point of when they pass. So it could be just for lore stuff. Not that they that they're still around. And I forgot her fucking tail. <sighs> I knew I was missing. Like I thought of the tail as soon as I opened this file. I was like, oh yeah, don't forget to draw the tail. And then I clearly forgot the tail. But how did you forget the tail? It's not the first time that's happened. And likely will not be the last. But yeah, like, that's, like, another thing I want to do. I want to do more lore stuff once I'm done with all the current project stuff. And then, like, I'm debating on how I'm going to do character art. Like, do they need to be hyper-detailed or just draw them for the sake of putting it out there? And a lot of it just boils down to what I want. But that's why I'm thinking of like using different rendering styles and art styles for that exact reason. I uh, kind of want to put an extra throw down here. There we go. But yeah, it's mostly just so I can get more stuff out there because there's like plenty of characters that either haven't been scanned in or haven't been remade or or like updated and stuff like Daylock still hasn't had her artwork updated. Despite showing up a few times already. How could you forget my tail? It's all it's right over my money maker. <laughs> okay, so next would be your hair, because that's the order I usually do this in. And then it'll also be fun to like draw characters like before the events of um, I have one, so like Marcy and Blake hanging hanging out before Marcy got all gigantic before she got all chunky. So I'll probably do that for like some slice of life stuff. Displeased with your lack of <laughs> you don't know that happened. That's like, that's like shit. I think about all the fucking time with my characters being like, "Hey, what's what's going on here?" I'm like, "I'm sorry, I'm trying." Just, just Becky hanging out, just shaking her head as her fat ass just lounges on my on my bed. She's like, get off my bed. She's like, stop being lazy. I'm like, pop me kettle. Yeah, I don't get enough done. I need to draw the sun at this point. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just talking this way. <laughs> I know Mars is like, you can't call me gigant. I mean, I'm... Okay, fine. <laughs> Skyler's just sitting there with a beer going like, I ain't saying nothing. I'm just going to sit here and grin.
It's <laughs> my fat ass rakes in money, which, uh, if that was the case, that'd be fucking awesome. It's partially true, but. Uh, so much more I need to do. And again, like a lot of like a lot of the stuff I talk about when it comes to like trying to do more and trying to be better and stuff like that, a lot of this is just in my own head type of thing. Like, it's not like anybody's really been upset with anything with the way I've been doing things. It's just more of a personal thing. If anything, it's like the only real complaint I've well, air quotes complaint that I've actually gotten was just like, you know, try to speed things up a bit so that way things don't take so long in terms of like how long it takes to get through a story or a chapter or something and even then it's like one person out of like the almost 10 years it's been it's been nine years now so it's not like i've had a lot of complaints or anything but it's more of a me thing and i should drink some water and i'm out of water <laughs> i'll go get that i'll go i'll get that in like 30 minutes so that way <clears throat> i get a little bit of work done before i go get some water <laughs> yeah And again, it's not like I can't draw Mars fat. I can always show her fat and then for a different reason. Since Roy is not dead in true ending. And neither is Tiffany. Usually put her hair and her tail in the same layer. <laughs> Don't mess with me, I can draw you fat. <laughs> At this angle on my phone, Blake has no face. <laughs> Spooky. Oh, that's that's terrifying. <laughs> that's terrifying if you're like watching the stream and then suddenly your face just vanishes. You're like, what the hell? <laughs> uh, Tiffany does like to drink a lot, like Becky. Um, Tiffany does drink pretty similar to Becky, but Becky's way worse. Mars weight gain drive win. Well, there's not going to be any more weight gain drives, but I will do progression stuff in the future. As their own art set. So there's a possibility of that. But right now, Vanilla's will be worked on but I want to work on another page of secrets first before I tackle that I'm just working on this because it's already been partially done okay let's do her scars I think this is the color let me check Same color. No, there we go. Let's move this over here.
<laughs> yeah, I do want to mix it up a bit with the uh, angles. Because there's been times where I wanted to like go crazy, but now I was like, eh. I'll just do it this particular way. Like with vanilla, since I haven't had a chance to work on any of the other parts yet, I'll probably do more with that. So instead of like in the same spot, kind, kind of a little bit more like Chica's um, last few picks where they were more dramatically different. So I'll probably do something like that, like or even like um, the last pick for Luna. How that one was in a different situation or a different spot. Um, outside of like more divine characters or like crazier characters than Becky, then yeah, Becky would probably be top alcoholic. It's when you like take in like certain groups of characters, like, oh, here's this big warrior guy, of course he's gonna like pound. A shit ton of alcohol compared to, to compared to Becky. So yeah, situations like that, then you know, obviously other characters could out drink her. But if I'm going to like just casual sense, she's probably the best one. And then of course the Creamfield cats are completely immune to that stuff, so they can drink however much they want. But that's why we don't count them. Yeah, that's, uh, or I'll probably say this in a bit, where what's, uh, yeah, yeah, I have so many fucking characters, but, um, but yeah, like, there's been situations where I want to go more crazier with the art that I'm doing. I just haven't been pushing it as much as I should, or as much as I've been thinking about. I think I've just been more focused on the comic aspect, and that's why I haven't been pushing too much. Especially since the uh, the comics, for the most part, have been pretty casual. So I wanna, I'm, I wanna start pushing it more. Because even like some of the older stuff that I've done is a little bit more out there compared to the current stuff. So I think I wanna um, do more with it. Okay, so what are we doing for her clothes? I was thinking like a yellow top or something, or if I do like a pink top, I can change the fishnets yellow to match. But I feel pink is like pretty basic. Yeah, again, this is more of a me thing. And I just need to... Like, obviously I can't just, like, throw a character into some bizarre scenario where they're, like, you know, upside down, ass up, and you're just seeing everything spread eagle, but... I mean, I could, but of course that depends on the situation, and I'm, it, it wouldn't make sense to just randomly do it. But, like, as, like, individual pictures that don't have to do with anything... Um... You know, I could always do that, but sometimes it just boils down to time because some stuff that's like highly detailed is going to take time, and it's really hard to figure that out. Or then again, it could be just something I work on over time. That I mean, again, this is a me thing. I need to figure out and process and get through, so that way I'm not constantly sitting there pondering. 
and then once I figure out my shit, then I can move on and work on something interesting and fun. So, yeah, a lot of it is just me getting getting through any artistic blocks that I've been self-inflicting. <laughs> right. But that, and again, that's why I've been like looking at tutorials and stuff on learning other shading styles and art and rendering styles and art styles and stuff like that. So that way I can make comic stuff a little bit easier to do without losing too much of the quality. Assuming there's even going to be a major shift in quality. Or at least noticeable enough to, for anybody to actually care. And then... Changing art styles based on... Um, based on what type of artwork I'm doing. So like, you know, the, the slice of life stuff is going to be flat color. Um the monthly character poll um that one's done in a more cell shaded ish because there's like some gradient to it but it's not as dramatic as the uh fat lovers club so everything's getting like moved over to different ways of doing the the rendering whether it's been noticeable or not It's all it's all mostly just to save time. That's like ultimately the point. Okay, so if I'm gonna use the color the nets yellow, then I wanna color her bottoms like probably a teal green. But yeah, that's just where my mindset's been. It's just trying to both improve things and make things more efficient. And then I want to work on more cards too. Luckily, some of the artwork for the next, next set has been made already. I just have to shift them over to the new template. And then I gotta make um, new cards for for the characters that need them. And then origin originally, some of the characters, some of the cards were gonna be like transformation cards in the form of like flipping the card over. But I'll probably save that idea for another set. That way it can be consistent. Because Kiwi's card doesn't do that. And it would make no sense to have the others do it and not hers. <laughs> or if I do do it, there'll be like other versions of the cards. And then I can always use it, you know, save the idea for like a different set. So like for example, if I made another Marcy card, it could be a trans a transforming card where it's like, okay, here's skinny Marcy. You fulfill whatever conditions it has, and you get to flip it over, and then you get fat Marcy. Instead of the previous cards where the fat versions of Marcy was all separate cards. So I'll have to look over the other cards and then as well as um future Marcy's card so that way I can have a balance between wanting to use the older versions and wanting to use the newer the newer one so that way like instead of power creep it's more like you know fits the scenario that you want to use either of those cards for because obviously you know if you're using the older versions they're taking up deck space 
whereas the transforming one uses up uh, less space. But then you have the future version of Marcy, who is also a separate card. So whatever works and whatever makes that card viable, given the scenario. And then there you go. So options. That's basically the idea. Just options. So rather than power creep, you just have more options. And then the game itself is based off of a tier system. So that way, most cards are pretty much viable. And there's like a less reason. There's a there's a lower reason for cards to be um, banned when you can just shift the, the tier. Uh... Do I want her to wear gold or do I want her to wear silver or both? I think I'll have her wear both. Put silver on top. It's on a different layer. But yeah, the idea of the card game is that since every card has a tier number, players can just adjust their the their tier number for like their groups. So like for example, okay guys, let's only have decks that are tier or thirty or something. So your deck has to have cards that all equal thirty that that equal thirty all together, and then you go from there. this would work. Um, maybe. There was a idea I wanted to do where um, a character shrinks food and as like an experiment or something and like another character thinks they're just like little mini bite things or whatever and so they eat them and like the other character freaks out going like what the hell why or you weren't supposed to eat those like, what why and then like the shrinking or whatever the case may be wears off and all the food goes back to their original size. So something like that. Or even worse, like the food just becomes gigantic or something. I mean, it can work both ways. There's no wrong answer to that. So maybe something like that in the future. Uh, we'll make this one gold. That way it's like gold, silver, gold. Yeah, and it's not like that idea is like super original. I'm sure somebody's done it by now. But hey, why not? I mean, the best part about ideas is just twisting them around and turning them into something new. Yeah, like in um, the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon where Tails eats a bunch of, um, I think it was like freeze-dried food. Like he just swallows like a bunch of it and then he goes to get a glass of water and then he just balloons the fuck up because he wasn't thinking about it in that fashion. So yeah, I can just do ex literally that idea.
Like, there's been so many waking scenarios in, in cartoons, it's fucking hilarious on how often it happens. And when people were like, oh my god, why is this happening? Why do you guys do draw this? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, dude, have you fucking grown up in the 90s or even the early 2000s? It's fucking everywhere. And they still do it nowadays, so it's not even like it went away. But that's what makes it fun, is because it's still a thing. If I could add a waking scenario to a cartoon that doesn't have one, what would it be? Like... Like a series in its entirety, or... Like an- or just like an episode that didn't originally have it. Because most cartoons have it. And it's really hard to think of a scenario where they don't. Or at least have some hint at weight gain. Because, like, as far as I'm aware of, like, Bluey doesn't have it. But there's always, like, slight hints to it where it's like, okay, the characters are clearly overeating and acting sluggish. But, like, there's nothing super noticeable. Or at least they don't exaggerate it as, as like, more toony cartoons do. one in general uh well one is definitely like well bluey quickly comes to mind because there's that one episode where um one of the characters was supposed to not eat um a certain type of chip or like chips or, so or something and uh, she was like keep these away from me and you just see her just constantly binging those chips so there's that um what other cartoon can I think of immediately? I mean, anime has done it a few times here and there. It's honestly really hard because it comes up so fucking often. <laughs> uh, I'm sure My Hero could probably probably has something like that, but it usually involves like a rubber character, like a character that can actually accommodate the scenario. Because I know Luffy's done it in one piece. I'd have to watch Alpha and Omega again to see where something like that would fit, but I'm sure there's some scenario. Like, I'm sure, like, the spin off movies and and uh, sequels have scenarios where that, where that you can just throw that in. Like, I mean, obviously, if you're making up a scene, then yeah, you can just make it happen. So it's like, okay, they need to eat, find, I don't know, a shit ton of honey from from some beehives that a, that a bear was going after. And they, like, scared off the bear or something and got all the honey. There you go. It's, like, done. Or, like, in, um, what was it? Over the Hedge, I think it was, where they found a shit ton of food. Or in Bolt. Uh, Bolt, they had weight gain in that one, where uh, they had Bolt get all act all cute for these um, trailer park people, and so Bolt and the cat got like a shit ton of free food, and the cat's like, "Look, my stom my stomach's actually distended," and she shows them with like a belly. So yeah, and and it's like, was that even necessary for that movie? No, but they threw it in there anyway. So there you go. Oh yeah, I'm sure the sequels are trash. They usually are for movies like that. 
that's why I didn't bother with the sequels because it was like once I found out Alpha and Omega were having sequels, I was like, yeah, no. And then if you looked at the quality for those sequels, you could tell that they were garbage. You're like, yeah, you could tell they did not give a fuck for the sequels. Because it was like the sequels kind of went... Um, I want to say how most 3D movies make like TV shows where the quality goes down dramatically in terms of like their animation because... Instead of giving the characters more of a flow um, with the animation, it's like super fucking stiff. Like you can you can tell pretty easily. Yeah, it's like their movements are stiff and they're like bouncy all the fucking time. Like every goddamn movement has them duck down for a brief moment and then bounce back up um in like a slight spring it, it's in every fucking television or cartoon um, show that does 3D like that and sometimes in like 2D animation where every fucking movement they have to bounce like they, they turn around for a moment bounce it's all the time cause like, cause like I know they're trying to build up the whole like you know, you have the anticipation and then the follow through, but they do it for literally everything. And I don't know if that's just like the standard for when doing animation like that, which probably is at this point since everyone does it. Um, or if it's just like something really cheap and easy to do somehow. And to be fair, it could be something cheap and easy because it's like instead of fully animating the character's face turning, you just make them do like a quick bounce turn so you can like skip some some frames or something so it's probably something like that but to me it gets a really annoying when every character is doing it and I and you start like hyper focusing on it because it happens so often I'm gonna color her nails yellow to match the net that we're gonna do but yeah like it could be a me thing but that's just what I noticed in situations like that, where it's like, damn, are they all bouncing? And then you just start noticing it way too much. Yeah, like they do that too, where characters get intoxicated and all boozy and like start, you know, speaking their feelings and stuff like that. Like they've done that in several movies. Even then, like random cartoons where like Tom from Tom and Jerry gets drunk, they've done that. Uh, let's give her some hot pink makeup. But yeah, it's pretty much just one of those situations where you just, like, obviously if it's for, like, a cartoon or, you know, a company that's trying to be all family-friendly or at least, you know, not super adult for whatever reason, they're not going to push the push the limit. But in terms of, like, you know, whatever you want to do with your own series, if you feel like pushing the limit, you just got to figure out the balance. You got to figure out what it is you actually want to do and then balance it out with your story and characters so because like if you do it for the sake of you know shock value um that's only gonna last so long because after a certain point if you do it too much then it just becomes bland and people are like already used to it and it's not as interesting so you gotta balance it out with other things And not so much like 
tease it until the very end type of thing, but just, you know, um, be a little bit reserved on it. It's, it's a it's a difficult struggle sometimes because you know you're trying to do something fun and all that but you're also like trying not to make it boring yeah yeah every time i saw that ice cream scene with spongebob you i was like okay you know damn well that they were supposed to be drunk he's got the five o'clock shadow and everything he's got like the the hobo look for whatever fucking reason you know damn well he was supposed to be drunk like that was like one of the few moments in spongebob where they like pushed it harder than they usually did you're like damn somebody wanted to wanted to really uh, make this a thing and it was fun i enjoyed it <laughs> uh, let's see what happens if i do this yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, let's turn you. All right, how are we doing this? That's the best way to do this. Do. Let me figure this would be it. Question is, do we want it this bright? Or do we want to make it a little bit more subtle? Uh, it's kind of like a. I think what's throwing it off is because it's going through this. So, what happens if I do it this way? Yeah, that looks nicer. Yeah, these are these are one of those like pick your poison scenarios. I think this is probably good. I can always change it later. I'll keep the original fish net just in case. Do. Well, yeah, because, you know, back in the day, Spongebob was heavily influenced by Ren and Stimpy. That's why they did a lot of crazy shit back then. Nowadays, my problem with newer Spongebob, especially, like, the current the current times um, ones, is that a lot of the times they try to go with, like, the, the more realistic faces with certain, like, celebrity characters or whatever. And then there's hardly a moment now in newer Spongebob where something isn't isn't overly exaggerated and crazy because like at least the last few episodes i've seen like every movement they have to overly exaggerate there's like no moment where it's just like anyone's calm and just like you know processing the the scene because like if you watch older spongebob there's like times where you know there's walking and acting normal and stuff like that and then something crazy happens and Newer Spongebob, it's like every movement is exaggerated. Like, it's just hyper-exaggerated for like almost no reason. And to, to me, that it makes it less appealing. Okay, I want to try something new. So let me save this. And let's try this. But yeah, that that was my that's my impression from the newer SpongeBob shows or season is that everything is hyper exaggerated. 
because it doesn't get because like they're operating on like um um what's the best way to phrase this i guess baby logic where everything has to like wow you every couple of seconds so you have like no breather because I think, like, the longest time something usually doesn't happen for an old cartoon show is, like, maybe... I want to say it was, like, 10 to 15 seconds or something like that. Now it's, like, every three seconds for those type of shows. Hello, Mookie the fish. Welcome. If Mars and Tarvos make Skyler Tarvos mad, did you ever feed him a basketball? To go? <laughs> yeah, because Simpsons kind of does. Well, Simpsons' problem to me is continuity because they're slowly retconning their own lore. Because, like, in older episodes, it's like, okay, Homer and Marge were were um doing stuff in like the 70s and stuff like that but then in later episodes it's like oh no in the 90s they were like this it's like wait 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 you guys weren't that young in the 90s what the hell are you talking about and then it and then it falls into like the whole like here's the technology that they have now and they didn't have it before or like the characters didn't like have this type of tech or stuff like that and then it, i mean sometimes they'll use it as a joke where it's like um where it's like sideshow bob will say yes it's taken me 20 years but i finally killed bart i mean granted that was a non-canon episode but still like don't make a joke like that and then it's like okay but how long has bart been away been uh, been 10 years old or however old he is Yeah, exactly. That's how I feel, too. And granted, the movie was supposed to be the end of The Simpsons. But then it did well, and so they kept it going. <laughs> the same thing happened with Spongebob. The Spongebob movie was supposed to be the end. That's why Spongebob became manager of the second Krabby, um, Krusty Krab. Because that was supposed to be the end. And then they kept it going. And, like, I get it. Like, you know, you have a popular series. It's kind of hard to, like, let that go and try to do something new. Or, or like, go with a different series. But I would prefer a series end on a high note than to run it into the ground. Personally, that's how I feel Steven Universe went. Where it started on a high note and then it slowly just got worse over time. The movie was good, but... I feel that after a certain point, it was just like, wait, what? Um, well, the creator of One Piece has said that there is an actual end to it, so... I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Kind of like how Kingdom Hearts, at least uh, Sora's arc, is supposed to be having an end. Because you gotta remember, like, um, in Japan, when you reach a certain age, that's kind of when you, like, get retire and stuff like that. And you're, like, you're kind of done. Or at least you change um, production roles and stuff like that, or whatever the case may be. So there's a going to be a point in time where the creator of Kingdom Hearts is going to have to like put it away Cause, and it might be a scenario where it's like the, the story that he wants to tell is coming to an end but you know other people are probably going to pick up the, the series and do their own story so like Kingdom Hearts will probably continue but with like different characters or something assuming they don't try to like milk Sora and his arc any more than they have 
but I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, like that was that was my issue with the Simpsons, is where they're like retconning their own lore. And like lately, they've been doing um, the whole, you know, the Simpsons inserted into like different kinds of stories rather than continuing on their own stuff. But every once in a while, they'll like go back to their own world, and then it's just kind of like. Okay, this is happening, but then suddenly the characters are acting in a certain way they didn't act before. Or regressing in terms of like what they've learned over over the years. And then suddenly it's like like with um Principal Skinner, where it's like well one day retcon his own lore where it shows Skinner with like his old blanket or something in one of the episodes, and I'm like, but Skinner isn't so and so's son, so how does that even a thing? And then Bart's is like, wait, Skinner's acting human? And I was like, yes, Bart, you've learned this lesson multiple times already. <laughs> you already know this. But that's that's just me. At that point, I'm just being like, eh, back in my day, Simpsons was good type of thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I have one now. I still get glimpses of their ongoing story without dragging this. Yeah, like, if I do want to do more with I Have Volume 1 characters, it's like, do it after other characters have had their time to do some stuff, and then visit back. So, like, with the Slice of Life, I just showed Marcy and Skylar just, like, kind of chilling. Like, re like briefly touching what they're doing. Yeah, they're still in love, and, Mar and um, Skylar still likes his wife big and thick. And then that's it. Like, I'm not trying to, like go overboard with it at least not not yet or not for now because i can return to them at a later time yeah like likely there's going to be a point where i show how their parents meet and talk and chat with each other it's like oh like um so this is uh, like this um uh, this is skylar's my parents and then, you know, the parents meet Marcy's parents, and then you go from there. And, you know, Marcy's mom's probably gonna be all super skeptical and shit. For obvious reasons. And then, I don't know, probably Skyler's dad's gonna hang out with Marcy's dad, and they just chill and have a beer or something. Or, like, Skyler's dad um, makes a comment to Skyler's like, Ah, that's my boy. He likes him thick, just like his old man. But yeah, like, that kind of stuff, I will probably go into at a way later date once like if I ever return if I ever go back to that kind of to the story that I, that I would like to do it would be after I've done I want to say after Skylar's story whenever the hell I get to that then it seems like something I would do or if Skylar or, or if using Skylar again to do like that short comic is a little too soon then maybe after like um, another I had story because Skylar's would be a Black Circus comic so yeah it's just a matter of just balancing it out so that way I'm not overusing characters because like again I had one being as long as it was was purely by accident or unintentional it just kind of happened that way trying not to do that with um, the current stuff but because I wanted to change things around, that's why their chapters have been shortened and split. So, let's just say I Have Volume 2 is going to be um, um, six chapters. Those six chapters probably won't be as long as I Have One's chapters. So, like, I Have One's chapters were like at least 70 something pages or so. Whereas I had two will probably be like in the 40s. So just split up for different reasons. And that's just because me wanting to change how I do things and stuff like that. But yeah, ultimately the idea is just don't over have characters overstay. They're welcome when it's not necessary. But I will try my best to balance it out. 
or do my best to balance it out. Let's fix that. I still find it funny that people think that Emerald is gonna bite off Andy's head, and I'm like, uh, you guys do know that that they exist in in um, I Hat One, right? And clearly, I Hat Two takes place before I Hat One because they're just meeting each other, whereas in I Hat One they were already hanging out or together and granted I can't always assume that people have read everything that I've made so Obviously, if they assume that's going to happen, then it's probably just because they haven't read the other content. And that's fine. I don't expect people to. But at least it makes them more interested when they do see characters in other stories and be like, oh shit, it's so-and-so. That's what makes that part fun. And that's why I like doing that, because I want, like, I don't want every character to be connected to every scenario, because that just seems... What's the right word for like convoluted? I think is where I'm going at. It's kind of like the whole like with Star Wars. It's like everybody's connected to a Skywalker for some fucking reason or something like that, or a Palpatine or whatever, which makes no damn sense. But it is what it is. So I'm trying to avoid that where it's like, okay, not every character is like around the corner. We say that because it's funny. <laughs> but yeah, like, the idea is that their interactions with other characters are limited. Because, for the most part, they're not going to know each other. Just like Marcy doesn't know, doesn't know who the hell Andy is. And if she even, assuming she even remembers him, she's just gonna know he's some guy that works at a hot dog, a hot dog shop, or stand, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, like I already have her story planned out. It's just a matter of getting there. Like, a lot of the stories I have planned out already, it's just, again, getting there. Which is why I've been trying to tweak how I'm doing things so I can get there faster. Because I don't like wasting people's time. I don't even like wasting my own time. And I'm the one that's doing it, so it's like, hey, hey asshole, hurry the fuck up. And I'm the one doing it, so... And I definitely don't want scenarios where... You know, if like a artist is working on a comic, but that comic's been around for like 20 years. And they're like only halfway through it and then something happens to them and now the comic can't end. Then we're all fucked. So I definitely don't want situations like that to happen. Uh, let's play this song. Yeah, that's why I'm just trying to find a good balance between, like, ch changing how I render, or shade, or however you want to call it, so that way things don't look too different from how I was doing it before. Like, it'd be different if, um, if a comic started a particular way and just stayed that way consistently. So, like, for example, with um, with I Have One, if I just kept it black and white and just stayed that way the entire the, the entire time, like, from the way I did Chapter 1 all the way up to 
chapter six, then sure. But because I kept, you know, trying to improve each chapter and changing things up, that's why I'm trying to stay consistent with the changes. I don't want to, like, go backwards for no reason. So even if I do have to go backwards, I at least want to adjust it so that way it can still look like the current look. So that's why I'm trying to put time into it or put effort into tweaking how I'm doing things. And then the bright side is I can apply that to other things so that way it's like, okay, different categories of things get a different look or a different usage and style. So that way I can both save time save time and um and keep up a certain range of quality. But yes, that's that's me trying. And then I've also been experimenting with the whole like art set stuff and seeing what works and what doesn't. That's how the Luna and Vanilla changes came about. And yes, I do read the comments. I usually read everything, including other websites such as um, BBW Chan. I usually visit the site every day, so it's not like I'm not going to see what comes up. And sometimes I can figure out who writes what. Because some people have a certain way of writing that I pick up on and notice. Not that it's a bad thing. It's not like, it's like, oh my god, I know who you are. It's like, no. It's like, cool, I know who this is. But yeah, I do like that people voice their concerns when they think something's not working. Or that something can be improved in some way. And they like try to share their ideas. And if it's something I can actually do, then I'll see about trying to apply it. But can't promise everything, but I at least try to pay attention. situations of how lighting hits a face, especially if it's an anthro face, done in a particular style. Uh, no, I should not be muted. Can you guys hear me? Uh, do you think Marcy has a possessive streak like part of why she increases? Okay, you guys can hear me. Cool. Yeah, you might just have me on. Well, if they can't hear me if I'm if they have me on mute. Uh, do you have my Mars as a position tree? Like part of watching your previous season so much. Uh, yeah, I could say Marcy would have a little bit of possession where, you know, she wants to continue being the one that he likes to fatten up. And I can speak from real life experience that that's a thing. <laughs> Where I've had a friend get pissy because 
sometimes I would turn my attention elsewhere. And she'd be like, what the hell? I was like, what? It's like, you're busy. <laughs> but yeah, I could totally see that. <laughs> Women. <laughs> Uh, that was probably a commission. Yeah, you gotta remember, none of the commissions are canon. Yeah. Like, Mar Marcy does take pride that she's, like, the big eater that, that Skylar fawns over. She just still oblivious that Skylar manipulates that a bit but it does give her like a form of self-confidence so it benefits her to think that that's like something she's capable of even if Skylar's the one manipulating it and like even when Marcy eats like normal food that doesn't get her all like hyper glutton um, she can still eat like quite a bit now because of her bigger physique and all that but obviously she's like a bit turned off where she's like eh, like the food's not bad but it's not Skyler's food type of thing so um, doesn't it doesn't like ruin any other type of food that she eats but she definitely knows that she can have better at home Don't take it the the wrong way. She just she's just a big eater now. She's like, oh, that's cute. You got a snack, <laughs> and you're like, no, that's dinner. <laughs> but yeah, like food isn't like normal food is not ruined for Marcy. She just knows that. If Skylar were, were to make his own version, that she would lose her goddamn mind over it. And again, this is completely her unaware that Skylar can manipulate food. And that's the whole point. She's never supposed to find out. She called my flat K, kids me. <laughs> well, you know, big bitches eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah like if I were to do like a comic where Skylar is around like other big women I think the I think the fun part would be just going through his mind of what he's thinking about uh, for like each individual woman so he's like okay like that one has a nice big belly or something or that one has a nice fat ass or something like that and he's like sitting there like thinking about it thinking about it thinking about it and then goes back to, to thinking about Marcy and he's just like, you know, probably a grinning or drooling of what he wants to do, do with Marcy later in the day. So like after like their outing or something that like probably inspires Skylar to make like some big feast for Marcy. And then, you know, stuffs her silly, plumps her up in all the right ways that he's been thinking about. And then, you know, goes to town with her in bed or something. Or even just satisfied that he, like, plumped her up. Like, he doesn't even have to, like, sleep with her or anything. He just, you know, already achieved his goal of making her big and big and plump in the way, or big and fat in the way that he loves it. And then, meanwhile, Marcy is just satisfied that she's stuffed as fuck at that point. But yeah, like, you can always tease that Skylar could have, like, a little bit of a guilty pleasure thinking of looking at other women in a certain way, but that's not going to deter him from being with Marcy. And then if I really wanted to go that route of jumping around from, like, big woman to big woman, I can always give that idea to another character. Like, someone who has it bad for, like, big women and then have that character be exposed to like a ton of 
fat women. Like, let's just say, like, a guy goes to a beach not realizing it's, like, a BBW beach or something like that or whatever name I give it. And then when they get there and they see all the women, they just, like, start sweating and go, like, oh, didn't realize we're, um, it was this kind of beach. And he's, like, trying to keep it cool, but then he just keeps, he just keeps seeing all them, all them rolls jiggling and shit like that. And he's just, like, he's, like, Lord have mercy. I mean, hell, that's that's almost the same scenario for the the cult of Thick, where it's just a bunch of BBW women, in in a or not cult, but Church of Thick, and um, you just have like the priests going like, "All right, I'm I'm, a, I'm around all these all these nuns, and all these nuns are thick as fuck. What do I do?" <laughs> it's literally that one meme of uh, uh, what was it? It was like, "I am a pious man, and uh, and no." <laughs> Uh, what did he say? It was like, I am a pious man and no uh, sin will deter me or something like that. And it's like, Reverend something, there's a there's a um, ultra thick gypsy woman with no sh with no shoes on and he just like, goes like, oh my god. He just loses his shit. I'll have to find that. It's been a while since I've seen that meme. I think it was like the 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 priest from um from uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame. It was probably that guy, but it was like some meme from that. You need a chubby chaser or perv girl for a chase. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I definitely have a character for that, too. I have a character for almost everything. It's just a matter of getting to that character or even showing the character at all. Because some of the characters are like still in like a folder I have from like fucking high school and college. Like, there are tons of characters I have not posted. And again, like, I lost count of characters I've had in high school. And that was, like, around 310 or something back then. And that was way before Marcy and Skylar were even a thing, so... Lord knows. Because Marcy, Marcy and Skylar weren't a thing until 2015. And I stopped counting characters back in... I want to say 2005... Maybe even sooner than that. Um, younger Marcy, jealous of other BBWs. <laughs> Older Marcy joining him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you gotta think about when, when Mar before Marcy was dating Skylar, Skylar was with other big women. Well, one one wasn't big in the beginning. She was skinny, and she ended up big later. And then there's a whole backstory with those three. Tiffany would have been the fourth, but that didn't happen. And they've been teased a bit throughout the comics. But the reason why I've been avoiding using them is because I want to save the stuff that happens to them for when I do Skylar's comic. So I've been avoiding using them for anything. Like Pepper has been used, but it has not, but none of the stuff that I've shown her in has anything to do with what happens to her in the comic. <laughs> the com the the music, yeah, I know. Uh, Future Marcy trying to bat her fast. So, oh, that would be a trippy time loop if that happened. He's like, Marcy, what? You have to go get fat. And we're like, what? Why? Like, because Skylar likes fat men. What? And he's like, yes. It's like, oh my god. And then she goes and gets fat. I don't actually that would probably ruin the timeline if she did that. Because she would suck all the fun out of out of it for Skylar. Although I will say like Pepper and um, the one panda girl were kinda chunky to begin with, so you would probably find some form of entertainment from making them bigger, but again, what happens to them is the fun part. Especially in Pepper's case. Okay, so I've been messing around with the lighting for a while now. I can move on.
but yeah, I have more than enough ideas for practically everything in, in time. It's just a matter of how quickly I can get to them all. That's why if I discover immortality, tell no one. Anyway. <laughs> Or if somehow I gain godlike abilities, tell nobody. Or at least nobody that would impact that in some way. Then again, if I did have godlike powers, I would just erase people's memories anyway, so I guess it wouldn't matter. There will be signs. <laughs> now, I'll just wait for everybody who knows me to die off. That way I'll just be like a, a random artist that's just constantly drawing stuff. And like, I don't know, every 20 years I'll just change my username. <laughs> Maybe people will figure it out based on art style, but even then it's like, eh. <laughs> I'll just say, no, I was inspired by this artist. There you go, shut up. <laughs> Be like a thousand years in the future, and people are like, wow, this comic's been going on for a while now. I was like, oh, I guess I gotta change my username again. <laughs> Yeah, if I did gain some cosmic abilities, the easiest way would just be to just blab it all out, because if I had the ability to erase memories, it wouldn't matter what happens. It's like, but you said on a video, yep, and that's what editing is for. <laughs> ah. Notice how quiet it's gotten now. <laughs> Probably look at an older piece of artwork that I did using this particular style because there's some details that I'm not remembering. It's the uh, the Katie Catswell artwork that I did because it has like a particular thing that I did that I want to double check on later. That's the bright side of to art files is that I can go back and be like what the hell did I do here and I'm like okay that's what I did and try to retain that for the future use that's what I do with the uh, Kyrell thicker artwork because that one I did the semi illustrated stuff and that was useful I'll probably like cherry pick older steps that I've done and put them all in a folder together. That way they're easier to find. Or just copy them and then put them in that folder. So that way, if I need to reference something, I can just go into that folder. Yeah, I think that'd be a smart idea. I should do that.
<laughs> you want Pepper to bully you. Should probably just take your food money. Or mock you for getting her so little food. She's like, bitch, go get me some more. What is this fucking small ass bowl of macaroni? It's okay, go get me a turkey. She's like, make that too. And bring me a pack of soda. And she yells at you as you're leaving. She took the decoy cat. Oh, uh, she'll she'll likely count be counting it before she actually leaves. Like she'll be walking away and start counting it, and then find the fun money, and then she'll turn around and start getting going back for you. She'd be like, "Oh hell no." And be like, oh lord, she coming. <laughs> nah, she wishes she could eat as much as Marcy. Well, Marcy, while she's being manipulated by Skylar. If it's like future Marcy, then yeah, Pepper definitely can't eat that much. But yeah, I definitely want to get to that little story when I get there. That implies I'll still be there when she notices. Well, you better hope you can get away fast enough. Because you'll be hearing her fat ass stomping. I like that one comic short by um uh is it shepherd is that the name i'm thinking of let me look uh yeah by shepherd um 0821 they do the monster girls um comic there's that one short where the big um i think she's a dragon the big dragon lady thinks that she's put on weight and so she asks her, um, I think it's her husband. She asks her husband um, if she's got if she's gained weight. And so he gets a cup of water and sits in a jeep. And he looks at and she ha and he has her walk by, and he like measures how much the ripple of the cup of water um, shakes. And he just tells her like, eh, there's a little bit of ripple, but not by much. And she's like, okay, thank you. And that's how he measures whether or not she's put on weight. And I was like, what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then like they, there was like another character there that was like why are you sitting in a jeep and it's like obviously a Jurassic Park re reference but still this is funny Since we're talking about the pair for oh I have no fucking idea what the hell that was um, let me see if I have it still because I found it in a reference and like even I was trying to figure out what that was I don't know if it was from like a movie or something <laughs> let me see if I can find the picture that I used yeah, here it is. Hold on. Yeah, this shit. I have no idea what the hell that is. <laughs> I was just like, sure, why not? Don't have a clue what that is. <laughs> so your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, I mean, given the world that they live in, it's probably some random creature that looks like that, or some mutated animal, whatever. I mean, granted, they do mingle with aliens, so it's possible something eventually became part of the ecosystem at some point. Like, you know, like, foreign um, creatures ended up 
sh uh, showing up on the planet or something. But yeah, in in terms of the reference that I use for this, I don't have a fucking clue what that is. I'm guessing it's a pie, but <laughs> he gave it a meek. <laughs> but I mean, like, look at it. If it is a pie, I don't know what the fuck kind of pie that is. <laughs> Because it's got like all this over here, so I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> like, it looks like some type of meat or... I don't know. I, I literally have no idea what this is. <laughs> but yeah, that was the reference. <laughs> so... <laughs> In order to answer that question, me, I'm like, I have no fucking clue. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> Cause I'm all I'm all thinking it's like you know a bunch of meat put together or something to make it look that way, but then it almost looks like it just came from one creature, and so I'm just like, look, at this point, does it really matter what it is? Does it as long as it tastes good? It's like, what is that? I don't know, just a centipede, a crustacean, or something. I don't know, some chicken crab, um, some whatever the hell we did. That's what it is. Oh, no worries. Oh, no prob. I'm glad you like my stuff. I try. Try to do the best I can. Sucking out the leg meat, right? I mean, this is Marcy with, like, fucking crab legs and shit. She's like... <laughs> Yeah, like you get like Marcy's hanging out with like Stacy and Blake, and they're all like, "What the hell is this?" And then Marcy just takes a big old piece of it, and just just eats it, and devours it, and like with a little bit of drool, she's like, "It's delicious." That's what it is. <laughs> and both just look at her in like slight horror, going like, "Jesus, this woman will eat anything now." Or have like a repeat of when, um, or of the neutral ending where Marcy was licking um, Blake in her sleep, but do that with bigger Marcy. <laughs> Just kind of getting a little intimate with Blake, and Blake is like, oh, oh, hello, what's happening here? <laughs> uh, hang on, I would have to translate that. Am I taking good care of your favorite rabbit? Mm. I take care of her the best way I can. <laughs> With torture and slight mental trauma, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I'm having fun with Blake. I always have fun with Blake. She's definitely up there as one of my favorites. Which is kind of a weird thing to say because I draw every character, so they all have to be my favorite in some fashion. The Becky special. Oh yeah, the Becky special is just a bunch of fucking random shit that Becky likes and just piled onto a fucking big ass plate. And everyone just looks at Becky and she's like, what? I'm hungry. She's like, fuck you guys. As she grabs grabs some beer, some alcohol. I was going to say beer, but she can just grab whatever the hell she wants. And And we're fought at Blake. Come out. <laughs> Come out of there, you wabbit. <laughs> uh, hold on. Let's see. For when the story of Skyler's ex girlfriends. Uh, that will be after Blake's comic. So, Black Circus number three would be Skyler. When that will be, I have no idea. It will happen as soon as possible. Or whenever the time comes. Elmer Fett was in a Batman comic. I'm, he probably was at this point. I mean, it's Warner Brothers, so... I mean, 
Daffy Duck was Batman, so. I thought Blake would point a, would paint a bullseye on her. Yeah, she probably would. She'll just shake her ass going like, go ahead and take your shot. I mean, Bugs is already cross-dressed enough to, to, to stir up a few feelings here and there, so adding an actual female rabbit is just going to make it worse. And then Lola is crazy ass from the uh, Looney Tunes show, so yeah, I can totally, totally see that happening. Ah, uh, that show was great. They should not have canceled that. It's like, oh, we're going to cancel this for Wabbit. And Wabbit was like, what the fuck? The only thing that came out of Wabbit was that thick, was that thick ass fox woman. And that was the only good thing that came out of that show. It's like, okay, can we just take the fox woman and put her into the Looney Tunes show? Because that show was fucking peak. And then they made fucking big chungus bugs into a into a episode where bugs gets fat. So that was a thing. Oh yeah, let me see if I can find her real quick. Uh Wabbit Fox Woman. What was her name? Claudette. Yeah, let me send her. Post a link to her. There you go. Not sure if the gallery will load of her. It's not loading on my or it's slowly loading on my end. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so just put her in the Looney Tunes show, and there we go. We're fine. Well, that version of Tiny Toons is is a alternate alternate storyline, so it's not even the same one. Because in that one, um, Buster and and Babs are are twins, so it's not the same continuity. Well, I mean that alone tells you it's not the same continuity. Then the rest is them going into the university for the first time and stuff like that. So more more than tells you it's not the same continuity and then certain characters don't get to show up like uh as far as i'm aware of elmira didn't get to didn't uh, return i don't know if she came back later on but from what i remember she wasn't included But yeah, as far as as far as they have as, as they have revealed, that is a separate continuity. Uh, I kind of don't like the scars being that deep. I'm just gonna keep them the way they are. Uh, if they didn't like her, I don't know what the reasons were. I thought Omira was fine, the way she was. She was just a psycho who was into all the animals. It's like, oh, keep them all as pets, and everyone's like, run! And then I think in the older version, Montana Max used to be poor along with Buster, I think. I'm not sure if that was like actually canon or if that was just like part of a random story that they made. But then like Montana got rich or something. 
and then that's when they like separated as friends but like I think I can't remember if it was like every Christmas or like every birthday the Buster still sends him something I don't know I could be totally misremembering this but it was like a long ass time ago oh yeah yeah I always liked Fifi and Shirley definitely Fifi Fifi was my go to character I would say probably Babs was probably second. And in terms of the male characters, Plucky was my favorite. For obvious reasons. I should watch Duckman again. That was a fun show. Oh yeah, the Yakety Yak video. I remember that. Uh, I want to see what Joanne's clothes will be like for her first show. Yeah. I'll have to come up with what she's going to wear when she does her first scene. But for now, she has to prepare for it. So that will be a fun sequence to go through. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to stop streaming, too. Um, so yeah, I will probably finish this on another stream. Assuming I'm not working on anything else. But um, here's what we have so far for Blake. Still a few more shading that I need to do. But, um, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, I will stream again tomorrow. Same time. Um, I want tomorrow to be the not safe for work stream, so I'm probably going to stream on Picardo because God knows I haven't streamed on there in forever. And, uh, yeah. We'll find something to work on there, too. But, um, yeah. Thank you everybody for coming and I will see you guys next time, alright? Have a good have a good uh, night everyone or day everybody. Bye bye.